and this also meant he was spending more time at our house. Originally, it was under the guise that he was friends with my husband, but in hindsight, I don't believe that was ever true. At some point, I found out that he had a severe mental illness, and then my codependency kicked in to overdrive. I had this need to help him and protect him from the world. I felt trapped, so I had sex with him. I thought it was the price I had to pay. I thought our marriage was strong enough to handle my infidelity. Well, it wasn't. I maintained the lie that we had only kissed for nearly three months. My affair started as what I believed was a friendship. My husband and I had some good friends and some members of their family that we had met a few times had moved back to our state. The husband was out of work and he had some skills that I thought would be helpful in my business. So I thought I was helping some family friends. He was creative and challenged me professionally. So I enjoyed working with him but I didn't see it as anything more than a professional f relationship. This continued for about two months, and then he called me at work one day. But this call wasn't work-related. He sounded very upset and said he needed someone to talk to. I thought it was strange, and I do remember being nervous about it. My husband was out of town, so I called and talked to him about it with him and told my mother. They both told me to be careful, but caring. So he came to our home that night, and we talked for a few hours, and he left. Then he started showing up randomly at our house, and it conveniently happened to be when my husband happened to be out of town. At the same time, he was warming his way further into my work life. He convinced my boss to give him some additional contracts so he could spend more time at the office. And this also meant he was spending more time at our house. Originally, it was under the guise that he was friends with my husband, but in hindsight, I don't believe that was ever true. At some point, I found out that he had a severe mental illness, and then my codependency kicked in into old into overdrive. I had this need to help him and protect him from the world. It made me feel needed and wanted. This pattern of him spending increasing amounts of time at my work and at my home continued for about three months. During this time, we started texting and communicating on Facebook. At first, the conversations were work-related or about very benign things. But at some point, they became more and more flirtatious on his part, and I started reciprocating. It made me feel needed. Then he confronted me and was asking me why I never touched him. Well, why would I need to touch him? But instead of telling him that it was inappropriate and that I would not touch him, I allowed him to hug me and, and justified it to myself that it was just part of being a friend. Mm -hmm. Looking back, it was yet another warning sign that I ignored. I was emotionally attached at that point, even if it wasn't romantic. I was like an addict, and I would have done anything to keep feeling needed. He made all of this seem normal, like I was the one living in a crazy world. Things went downhill from the flirtatious conversations. In December, after much convincing, I agreed to let him kiss me. I convinced myself that things would stop there. I knew it was wrong, but I was convinced that I could somehow get myself out of this mess and that we, and that we could go back to just being friends, so I could just get my emotional needs met. I didn't realize that this alone was an emotional affair and was as dangerous for me as a physical affair. I still loved my husband, 
but I was in denial and convinced myself that I could be a good wife and still have this jacked up friendship on the side. After all, my husband was friends with him too, right? Shortly after the first of the year, my husband left for an extended time away from home. He told, he told me he did not want this person in our home while he was gone. I agreed, but I knew I wasn't strong enough to say no when my affair partner showed up on the doorstep hours after my husband left. So, I lied more. He conveniently got snowed in while at the office and told me he needed a place to stay so I let him while he was there he confronted me and said you know we're already having an affair right he wanted to make things official at that point and get it in I said no so he continued to pressure me for the next several days I realized that I was in a mess way over my head and had no idea how to even start getting out I didn't feel like I could tell my husband that I was lying and had been lying to him for months about the extra time I was spending at work. I felt trapped, so I had sex with him. I thought it was the price I had to pay because of a, because of a variety of things that are now related to childhood wounds. These experiences were somewhere between terror and excitement. It was like a roller coaster. The sexual relationship continued for about two weeks. Then his wife called him at work and told him she knew about the affair and had moved all his things out of their home and into storage units. Things turned from excitement and terror to just terror. My heart still beats fast thinking about that day. I called my husband, who was still out of state and told him that we just kissed and was asking for his forgiveness. I was trying to cover my tracks fast. In that moment, I saw my entire life flash before my eyes. I always assumed he would give, forgive me. I thought our marriage was strong enough to handle my infidelity. Well, it wasn't. I maintained the lie that we had only kissed for nearly three months, but my husband was suspicious. He was asking me about it numerous times and I denied that anything more happened. I also continued to maintain online contact with my affair partner under the guise that it was for work. As I learned in affair recovery, we merely agreed to continue the affair by doing that. Nothing had changed except the physical contact. While this was going on, my husband was doing his own investigation. He checked my phone. He checked receipts. He checked with my affair partner's wife. He confronted me one last time when he could show with receipts that my affair partner and I had been out of town together and was asking if we got it in. I knew I was caught in a lie. My lie. So I told him. He was devastated. I was like a piece of stone. I knew I should cry. I was terribly ashamed, but I couldn't feel anything. I remember trying to cry. I was frantic, but nothing would come. I think it was at that moment that I realized something was terribly wrong with me. I wasn't ready to fix it yet, but I knew something was wrong. I was in a fog, a delusion of my own making. I couldn't see what my affair was doing to my relationship with my husband. My relationship with my friends and to, be, and to my performance at my job. In my delusion, I thought I was managing everything. In reality, everything was suffering. The longer the affair went on and the deeper I got into it, the more into the fog I went. I was at least six months before I started to see reality again. I think in some ways, I'm still coming out of the fog, and I haven't seen my affair partner in nearly two years. I know that the cost of my affair was the least of my concerns when it was going on. In my delusion, I thought there were no costs. In reality, it cost me my marriage, numerous friendships, my ability to be trusted by other people, respect at my job, my house, my sense of safety and comfort. The cost seems endless and overwhelming if I really start to think about all of them together. My life as I knew it, everything I had worked for and hoped for was gone after my affair. The thing that is thing that is sad to me is that I sold it for something so cheap and not worth it. There are also lots of little things that it cost me. 
I couldn't go into my favorite restaurant. I couldn't listen to music I loved before the affair. I couldn't wear certain clothes. So many things were reminders of my shame. And every time I see or hear one of them, or even say certain words, all of the shame comes flooding back. It started to decrease a little bit, but I'm still really careful. I also have problems feeling safe when I drive around in certain parts of town because I am scared to death that I'm going to see my affair partner. I made lots of mistakes after full disclosure of my fam affair. The first one was to try to pretend that everything was the way it was before the affair. My husband refused to talk to me, and I didn't know what to do. The isolation was so painful, and it scared me. But in my shame, I refused to tell anyone what was really going on. I was scared of what people would think of me, so I didn't tell anyone. That insult to injury, the, the only person I thought was safe to talk to about my affair was my affair partner because he was the only person who knew what happened and really understood. I realize now that this is madness, but it is what I did. I did make an appointment with the with the counselor. I went to see her once my once by myself because my husband told me I was messed up and I needed to get help. I also joined a celebrate recovery program. The problem with that is that I was just trying to check things off the list to get him to get him to stay. I couldn't even see what was wrong with me or what I needed to change. After one session, the counselor told me that we should do couples counseling. This was this was a complete and utter disaster. I think we went to four sessions. And after each one, we would spend hours crying and then three days not talking to each other. We went once a week. It was pretty traumatic. And there was no time to recover. The counselor had no experience dealing with infidelity, so it was a huge mess. She completely validated me when I really needed a swift kick from an objective party. She also told my husband that if he would have loved me more and done more things for me, I wouldn't have been unfaithful. Wow. We were wanting someone to tell us what to do. And instead, we got a crazy lady who made the, who made the situation worse instead of better. I have wondered what would, happen, what would have happened if we had found a fair recovery sooner. Force of Action I participated in Hope for Healing at the Recovery Library membership. When I first found a fair recovery, I had a voracious appetite for any information I could get my hands on. The library helped me understand that I am not alone and gave me some beginning steps to help understand my situation. Listening to the questions and answer sessions with Rick and his audio recordings helped me feel hope. I remember feeling other people have done this. I can too. I had completely messed up my life by having an affair, and my husband was gone. Wow. <laughs> ma'am, 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 ma'am. Mm -hmm. So this guy, this friend, the whole time you're making it like, oh, he's calling me. He's flirting with me. Ma'am, you wanted all that to happen. And I'm sorry. I think she's kind of, I think she might be lying. I don't think she's giving the full story. She's making it like this guy who had mental issues and she just wanted to help nothing more. Wanted to was coming on to her. No, 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 no. He made him feel like he could smash. He made him feel like uh, it's yours if you want it. Not slick. What gets me all the time is that people like her would come online and share their stories and still play the victim. They'll still play the victim. It, it, it blows my mind. Just tell the truth. You've already gone through it. Your husband's gone. He's not coming back. Just tell the freaking truth. And they can't do it. Accountability. Not going to happen. Mm. Mm. People share how they got revenge on a cheating ex.
Finding out that a significant other has cheated is not only hurtful and devastating, but enraging too. Some people get so furious that they have to take matters into their own hands and get back at their deceitful exes. Those who have been cheated on share what they did to take revenge against their former lover. Suspecting his girlfriend of cheating, he bought her an iPad for Valentine's Day. Unbeknownst to her, he had actually bought two iPads with matching cases. As she was setting it up, he switched the iPads and she believed she needed to start over because the iPad had to be restarted. This gave him complete access to her text messages, email, phone, etc. Sure enough, he discovered that she was texting with others and that she was sleeping with three different guys besides him. He monitored the text and instead of just breaking up, he decided to go savage. As she planned a Thursday night rendezvous with one of her three other lovers, the married one, he took her iPad and texted the other two telling them they needed to go to WhatsApp because her boyfriend was getting suspicious. He then deleted the text and began conversations on his phone with WhatsApp, the other dudes, and blocked them on the iPad. He sets up dates with the other guys at the same rendezvous she was meeting the other dude. That insult to injury, he texted her parents, brothers, and sisters and invited them to meet there as well under the pretense that he was going to ask her to marry him. To add even more insult to injury, he contacted the married affair partner's wife and told her where her husband would be and who he would be with and at what time. He strategically set the times to create the most dramatic impact. He arrived with her family 30 minutes before his girlfriend was to arrive to meet her married lover. They were already seated at the table when she walked in and greeted the stranger. Seated at the bar with a hug, everyone looked confused but not as flabbergasted as she did when she looked over and recognized her family sitting 20 feet away. She was formulating her response in her head and trying to make sense of the situation when in walked another of her fair partners who happened to recognize the married first one because they were all three co-workers. What? An argument quickly ensued just as the third partner arrived. She realized at this moment that her boyfriend had something to do with this convulsed mess and began to attack him. Just as he was beginning to call her out for being a floozy, the wife of her original date arrived and recognized the situation's ramifications immediately as her husband was in a verbal altercation with a co-worker over another woman. How could you do this to me? The girlfriend screamed. This is the first time in your life that you aren't happy to be the center of attention, the boyfriend said. You live in an I, me, mine world, and this is all about you and of your own making. <sighs> Yo, salute to that guy, man. Are you? Wow. Wow. Do you guys remember that story? I did, I did it on here maybe, it was years ago. It was when it was it was before I had to like take down all the old videos, all the old videos. It was part of that that collection of videos. And I did a story about a guy who. I think he and I might have redone it and I might have redid it and put it up. I can't remember exactly, but it was a story about dude. He found his wife cheating or whatever, and he invited the family over for her birthday and like <laughs> And she was getting it in with the AP and the family opened the door or something. And it was a surprise. It was like super, super savage. This almost reminded me of that, man. And I hadn't heard something that like, you know, like that since then. But guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. We'll catch you guys at the next one. Mm.